What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Finance Friday. I'm very happy to have you guys on here. Um, this uh, month, I do have a guest on the channel because we are talking all things financial protection. And today, we want to take you through medical covers and medical insurance. Miriam, yes. say hi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm happy to be back. Thank you. I know. Um, and today yeah. we are really going to get into medical cover, especially because um, on this channel, we talk a lot about financial planning, emergency funds and everything. And we know that one of the things that can bankrupt an individual and a family is actual illness. We see people selling um, assets literally even having to raise funds uh, and take out loans because of illnesses right yeah. um and today we want to give you very practical like um tips and very practical solutions to medical insurance and medical cover mm -hmm. if one of the reasons you do not have one is because you feel like it's too expensive for you i promise you and you guys don't you know i don't lie I promise you there's something for you mm. today, something that is affordable, mm. something that is practical and something that can give you a good level of protection. So please join me and let's get straight into it. I think today we are going to start. Um, if you are new on this channel, Marian mm -hmm. is an insurance expert. Yeah. As, as a matter of fact, I love to call you a protection. Oh, a protection expert. Expert. I love that. No, that's right. And a protection specialist. Yeah. So that's why I have her here on this channel mm -hmm. because I am a finance, budgeting, and investment specialist. But she really, really is good in terms of protection, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why I, I mean, she's just helping us to have this conversation mm -hmm. this um, in this month, mm -hmm. um, so that we can really get to take a deep dive. Now, mm -hmm. why is medical insurance so crucial? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we do know we have an idea, but like I mean, for you because you've seen mm -hmm. families come in yeah. here, you've seen what it can do. Um, I mean, could you tell us? I actually honestly yes. believe that. Uh, Having a medical insurance is non-negotiable, right. regardless of whatever level of income I'm at. What yes. do you think? That is very true because we have to, first of all, understand what does medical insurance do. So medical insurance pays your medical bills, unexpected medical bills. So in the case of an illness, an accident, or, you know, thing, it can even go to, you know, maternity, dental, and optical, depending on what it is. So always remember it pays for unexpected medical bills. So sometimes people think that, oh, I, can, I have an emergency fund. I put some money aside, I can self-insure, yeah? But now this is the thing. You have to remember there's some very big emergencies that not even an emergency fund can take care of. Uh, yeah. You see, it's things like admission. When you get admitted, you know that your, your emergency fund will not be enough. And why, you know, put yourself in that position when you can easily just take out a medical cover and just have a peace of mind that... In the case life was to happen today, yeah. I can access a good hospital. Yeah. I can access the best specialist to take care of me. Because either way, if you do not have that, you know your investments are going to go down the drain and your savings. And remember, yeah. the most common situation, what happens is, you know, people love to save and invest. The reason why they're even here on your channel is because we're all investors. We are trying to we're, grow, we're trying to grow money. Yeah. So tend to forget the aspect of protection. Uh -huh. And we know that one illness can wipe away everything that you've built. Yeah. So it doesn't only just take away your money. It's the time that you've built over, mm -hmm. the time that you've used to build this money. So yeah. imagine now having to start from scratch. More negative because maybe you had to take a loan to take care of your to even medical take care expenses. Of it. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's always important to have a buffer in the case of the unforeseen. Yeah, yes. I read somewhere that over 80% of African families mm -hmm. are one illness away from wow. financial crisis. That is huge. I was, yeah. I mean, I was just, but then it also makes sense. Yes. Like if you look at the number of medical appeals on social media mm -hmm. today, yeah. if you look at the number of WhatsApp groups, yeah, yeah. if, if, if people were to even be honest with you, because yes. even me in my own personal life, I have mm -hmm. experienced a situation where someone close to us yeah. was unwell for over a year. Yeah. A year. What that does to a family, as in for the first time in my life, I understood what an ICU bill 
look hey, like girl a hey, one yeah, night it's crazy yeah one night in the icu we are talking hundred hundred thousand plus some places even yeah. it's almost 120 exactly and you're not being fancy yeah. This is just a, a, a normal yeah. hospital, right? Mm -hmm. So having to, to look at that, in fact, that's one of the things that, I mean, I know we are not supposed to be anxious, but yes. it keeps me up at night. Yes. Having had to experience that because it's like you can work your whole entire life, build this amazing portfolio, and then just one illness completely obliterates that. So before I wasn't like a medical cover um, enthusiast, but it wasn't that I didn't want to, but it was like, for me, it was really expensive, yes. which is why I wanted you to come here today. Yes. Um, because like for me, the more I started kind of like researching, I realized that expensive is in my head. Mm -hmm. It's true. It's all perception. It's, it's all so many perception. Things. And then there are yeah. so many like actual affordable yes. covers yes. that are budget friendly for yes. any level of income. Yes. So I realized like when I stopped saying it's expensive mm. and I started looking for what's within my budget, mm. then I started kind of like saying, oh, so medical cover is not for rich people only. Or like for me as an employed person, medical cover is not for employed people yes. only or an employee benefit. Yeah. So we've gotten that out of the way. Mm. Now, obviously, the most basic cover that we have in mm. Kenya is NHIF. Yes. But um, I used to think, and I also know many people who think mm. that NHIF is a scam. Mm. So you're feeling like, one, we are paying the government money for nothing. Um, and the benefits that you, you think you're going to get the moment you go to Hosi, like that's not what you get. It's almost like NHIF can do nothing for you. Is that really the case? Um, and really, actually, my question, and I wrote it down to here, is... Like, how can I make NHIF work for me mm. if um I, I, I only have NHIF mm. at this particular point? How can I make it work for me? Okay, so NHIF, for those who do not know, is the government-sponsored medical care. Mm. So it's if at the bare minimum, even if you are so broke, yeah. just have NHIF. Yeah. So what are the different benefits? Number one. We have, it does take care of bed charges mm -hmm. in the case now you do get admitted. Mm -hmm. So for low cost hospitals, it could even be 1,200 for yeah. now more expensive hospitals. The maximum though is 4,000 a day. So the maximum yeah. that NHF can cover for a, a bed yes. is 4K a day. Exactly. Yeah. So NHF also does have maternity benefits. Mm -hmm. There's something called... Um, is it Linda Mom? Linda Mom. Yeah. 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 I think the biggest problem is just lack of information. Yeah. So normal delivery, okay, it caters till 10,000 okay. and CS till 30,000. Uh, so any NHF accredited hospital, mostly now the government, government yeah. hospitals, to you to definitely take care of this. Mm. And by the way, this is not for civil service. Civil servants have a very different energy. Uh, so know, this yeah. is now for the normal typical, people, just yeah. typical Kenyans, yes. Mm -hmm. It also does take care of now radiotherapy. Yeah. Oh, that's like yes. for cancer treatment. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. And it's very, very good. I've had enough people who have actually been helped through NHIF. Yeah, especially with a yeah. critical illness. Exactly. Thing. Yeah. So you know how it can be such a burden. So mm. but now if you do understand what are the benefits, you're going it's going to be very, very helpful. Mm. So I would advise people to go to the NHIF website which will also link yeah. the video here. Yeah. To understand. So there's radiotherapy, um there is also oncology clinic, oh, wow. also still for cancer. cancer. Yes. Yeah. I've also seen even for family members, people who've actually been helped with this. Yeah. yeah. This ki kidney treatment, we know people who go for dialysis and NHIF covers yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. So when people tell you that NHIF is a scam, it's not true. Mm -hmm. I understand that there's a certain perception for anything that belongs to the government. You know, <laughs> to that. <laughs> it's rather yeah. having something that you, nothing at all. I think it's all. good to have something. And, and, mm. and I think for me, I also had mm. a close family member yeah. who um, went through like a cancer treatment yeah. process. They actually did pay for like some of the treatments, mm. but in government institutions. Yeah. So I think, guys, what we are trying to say, because this is like the most basic level of protection, mm -hmm. we are trying to say, go out of your way to understand like how NHIF works. Mm -hmm. Because also if you take an NHIF cover mm -hmm. and decide to go to, say, like a private hospital, a really premium private mm -hmm. hospital, then obviously the, the cover... Yeah. Um, and the benefits are quite limited, mm. right? True. Of course, if you even compare like the bill mm. in a private yes. um, hospital Very and good. one in a government yeah. hospital. Yeah. So what we are saying is instead of staying completely without any form of protection, 
the most basic, basic level of protection is NHIF. You also realize even if you decide to go an extra mile mm -hmm. and take now additional covers, which is what we are here to discuss today, yeah. um, you'll find that most of them require that you have that bare minimum yes, yes. NHIF, yeah. right? So in the case of an admission, even if you had uh, a an, an private cover, yeah. it's usually net of NHIF. Exactly. So you'll be admitted, if you didn't pay for NHIF, you have to pay the 4000 You actually have to pay cash, yeah. whatever NHIF was, was meant to, to cover, yes. right? So what we are saying is that, and I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna link um uh, the 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 NHIF website down below, just so that you can understand like what are the terms and conditions. Actually, you could even go an extra mile to call on the number of the, on the website and and ask, you know, if if I if I wanted to um you know get treatment or if I wanted to activate this particular protection, what do I do yes. about it? And I think it's also important. Like another thing I was given as a tip yes. was ensure that you understand the the hospitals mm -hmm. you can go to because like when you're choosing an so you have to, cover it's true. you have to choose your so, hospitals it's true exactly so try as much as possible and do proper research mm -hmm. there are actually very good um public hospitals mm -hmm. that give very good um services right of course we're not trying to name names here mm -hmm. but what we are trying is that on the bare minimum try as much as possible mm -hmm. to have that nhif cover it is the bare minimum mm -hmm. and it is mandatory for everyone whether you're employed or not yeah it's something that you must do right exactly. so at least we've gotten that yes. out of the way right yes. That's now the first layer of medical protection. it's actually the first, the, the first yeah and uh, the yeah. first layer of protection so yes. what i want us to do is um and why i, I needed you here today yes. is beyond nhim mm. what are the other options that are available for us and i'd also want us to get into i've had so many horror stories for medical covers um, and do you know it's so bad because when someone is in hospital yeah. and you know you're just now finding out that your cover can't pay and you're already in trouble like you have a patient already it gets really tricky so today I want you to help us understand how do I choose a cover what are some of the things that I need to be on the lookout for the companies that um, are really good yes. right um, so let's get into that and let's really understand like beyond NHIF what else is available for us? So, Marian, tell us, if I already have NHIF, why would I need a private cover? Okay. So, when you have your own private cover, you're able to access other private hospitals, which yeah. are not necessarily the government hospital. Mm -hmm. And it also gives you an extra layer of protection because NHIF is only limited. Mm -hmm. I think that's why we say it's the first layer. It's still equally as important. Yeah. But then now it's important now also to have extra protection uh -huh. and you know when you have your own private cover you are uh, able to access hospitals maybe you might not be able to access we NHIF. NHIF. yeah yeah and we've, as you're saying you know earlier we've had of enough horror stories yeah people getting extremely sick and mm. then you are rushed to a private hospital oh dear yeah and you cannot get admitted yeah we've heard of yeah. how people have been left to be in pain mm. on in the reception but it's just because now you didn't have medical insurance. Right. And you know, in this country, if you do not have the cash, you will have, you, they will not let you in. Yeah, tell me about yeah. it. Yeah. So you, you die at yeah. the waiting bay. Exactly. As long as you don't have yeah. money. It's extremely traumatizing. Yeah. So you see, now if you have medical insurance, it will give you that access. At least you'll be admitted. Yeah. Because... If you do not have, say, for big hospitals, like 100, 150,000. You're not getting Then we're going to, yeah, because yeah. the thing is that also hospitals, it's a business at the end of the day. You have to remember. Sadly, it. You know, I wish there were not. <laughs> yeah. So even for them, they have to now go according to what has been written down for them. So they're told you cannot admit someone unless they have a medical cover uh -huh. or unless they give us cash. So now you can imagine someone has fallen sick in the middle of the night. Now you have to go yeah. and call so everybody yeah. to be able yeah. to just raise the funds yeah. to be able to admit your person. Yeah. So your person or even yourself are in so much pain when if you had a medical cover, you could just easily have you been admitted. Easily been admitted. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it's good to take charge of your own personal and private medical cover because yeah. of that. Yeah. Because you never know how life can be. Do you yeah. know? Do you know one yeah. of the things I've I, um when I was even starting my journey, like in in terms of like now understanding myself as a young adult, um, I'm I'm trying to just figure these things out. I remember one of the journal entries I did and it has really grounded me in terms of where and what to spend money on. I had to ask myself, what does financial freedom mean to me? 
And I remember, obviously, because of a personal experience I've had and, and, and because of just witnessing, like for me, financial freedom looks like dignity in such time. Yes. You see, like when you're literally like on the waiting bay, like I've yeah. gone to hospital sometimes and I'm in tears mm. because they will legitimately <laughs> let you die. Yeah, it's true. They will legitimately so let you die. And and I think every time I talk about medical cover and guys are like, oh, no, we'll just pay ETC. I'm like, I don't think you understand mm. this. Unless you've ever actually had a yeah. patient. Yeah. Or okay. unless you so, or yourself or you've ever tried to admit yeah. someone. And maybe, you know, sometimes business is booming and then other times it isn't, mm. right? Other times money is there. Other times someone has told you, oh, like a money market fund yes. withdrawal. Yeah. I, I need it today, but mm. it takes three to four working yeah. days yeah. for me to get the money, right? Um, And so for me, having to start like changing my mind about medical, mm -hmm. it has had to be kind of like defining for myself uh, because so many of you guys are working so hard mm -hmm. like you're giving your employer eight hours a day six days a week you are you know killing it in your business right there's this money that you're working so hard for but like at really crucial times like when something like that is needed it's like you're stranded yeah. so what were you working so exactly. hard for all along yeah. when you cannot be able and Sometimes, you know, I was looking at the rates and we'll talk about it that you were showing yes. me. And some of the rates are as affordable as a weekend of fun with your girls. Girl, it's true. Just and one good weekend yeah. of fun with your yes. friends, you can get a good cover, yeah. like or at least a, an acceptable mm. cover, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and maybe maybe you can take us through. Yeah. Like, uh, and I'm very, very, I want you to be as specific as possible. How do I choose a cover? What am I on the lookout for? And I want to give you an angle, yeah? Mm -hmm. If I want to t you to talk to me about like if I'm uh, I'm I'm a single person, yes. What do I look for? Mm -hmm. If I am a married person with family with a family, mm -hmm. what are the, like give us the really like specific things we need to be on the lookout for yeah. when choosing like or when picking a company to give us a cover? Okay. And maybe when you're yes. doing, so look at it from the perspective of a single person, mm -hmm. um, a married person with a family yeah. or big families. You know that big families yeah. want to like get just a yes. family cover. Yes. Um, talk to us about that. Single and yeah. family. Okay. So first of all, I'll just talk about the general things first yeah. on what to look out for when you're picking a medical mm -hmm. cover uh, because it can be extremely confusing, so. especially since there's so many products in the market mm -hmm. and you don't know what exactly to look out for yeah. unless you're an you know, an insurance professional, mm. yes? Mm. So number one, when it comes to insurance, it's important to look at what we call sublimits. So there's the overall limit, okay, you, you are told, okay, you're covered for 10 million shillings. Mm. But then there's the sublimits. Now the tiny, uh, the other tiny limits yeah. wi within the main limit. Mm -hmm. So this is where now you hear someone is like, okay, I'm in hospital, I have 10 million shillings, but <laughs> I've only no, spent 300,000 and I'm told my cover is depleted. Yeah. But let's say, for example, yes, you had a 10 million shilling cover, but for pre-existing condition. So pre-existing condition means something that you already came in with. Yeah. Um, when you're getting the medical cover, you're told it's mm -hmm. only 500,000. Mm -hmm. So you're admitted maybe for high blood pressure and the 500,000 is over. Uh -huh. So you're like, okay, why? Yeah, but it's because there was a sub-limit within the main limit. So yes, the main limit could be 10 million. But it's also important now to look at those now tinier limits. So we're like, okay, what within now the main limit? How much is maternity? How oh, much? Yeah. Yes, yeah. How much is pre-existing condition? condition? How much is for chronic and critical illnesses? Yes. How much is for accidents? And are you even accident? covered for accidents? Exactly. Yeah. So uh, most uh, medical covers definitely cover accidents, uh, but then now usually the yeah, chances of getting the illnesses is higher than an accident. An accident. So always yeah. make sure that you're looking. Okay, these are the limits of um, now my the illnesses, and then now looking at what is most important. So things like chronic illness, yeah. pre-existing conditions, mm -hmm. especially depending on maybe where you are as you're getting now the cover, mm -hmm. it's important to look at. Yeah. So to break that down, if I'm if I'm getting you correctly, is that when someone tells me, Coach, I have a cover for three million, meaning sour, it doesn't mean that that three million can cover can pay any illness or any like health condition. Mm -hmm. So within the three million, yeah. there is like five hundred is strictly supposed to cover yeah. uh, chronic illness yeah. and then 300 is supposed to cover this that and the other so 
Ata kama kapa ilikuwa ya 10 million or 3 million, as long as they um yeah. they exceed that limit, they will now do you have to now yeah. pay, pay in cash whatever exactly. else is upwards? Yeah, so you see now, you've heard of people who get, let's say, a cancer. Yeah. And maybe the the amount of money that pays out towards cancer is just the 500,000 or a million. Mm -hmm. No cancer is very expensive. So anything yeah. beyond that so million? So beyond that million, you the pay. insurer cannot pay. Yeah. So this is why you hear that someone had a medical cover, but, but they, they are still yeah. having to raise yeah, funds. They still have to raise funds. Yes. Because most people get in without that knowledge. So the worst yeah. thing is coming in and then finding out when you're already inside. So if you have your medical cover now, go and check out that policy document yeah. and just check. Mm -hmm. And also, when you get it, please just ask your agent. I mean, mm -hmm. it's your money. Please, yeah. it's your hard, uh, hard earned money. Just ask, okay, so what am I covered for? Please be extremely transparent so I can understand. Yeah. Now, in the case, okay, maybe the cancer can only be taken care of to this limit so that I can plan accordingly. I have some other sort of liquidity on the side or other covers to buffer it. So sublimit. Guys, Munaskia, the first and the most important thing you need to be on the lookout for mm. when you're choosing a cover is to understand the sub limits, mm. The limits and the sublimits. Yes. Okay, what else should we consider? Waiting periods is very important. Yeah. Hey, so let me tell you, Susan, the, a lot of questions I get in my DM. So I am pregnant. Can I get a medical cover that can take care of... I want to hide. Hey? <laughs> so yeah. this is how most people now understand, now get to see there's something called waiting period. Yeah. And then yeah. here's also where we call, we are called scams as insurance. <laughs> but this is because most people don't understand where, how insurance works. Mm. Let me give you an example. So you see someone comes in pregnant mm. and then they're like, okay, now I want a medical insurance to take care of my maternity yeah. bills. Yeah. So let me give you an example. So you have a car, Susan, and your, you, you, your car, maybe you get into an accident, gets hit, and part of the car is damaged. Then now you imagine now going to the insurance, say, give me car insurance, motor insurance, so that you can fix this. Yeah. It doesn't work like that. No one will give you car insurance, yeah. car insurance at to that point. Yes. Fix that specific exactly. issue. Be so you have to understand, yeah. you get insurance before it happens yeah so if you know that you have a husband or a partner and there's high chances of your pregnant, pregnant, yeah yeah when sometimes it comes unplanned mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so you have to make sure that you have this thing so that yeah. in the case of a pregnancy mm -hmm. it will be catered for yeah. don't be reactive just be just know that this could be a possibility mm -hmm. so just always have a medical yeah insurance. it's like how we get as you've said we get car insurance before the accident yes so not after like after the accident now you want to take a car insurance no. to cater yeah, and i've exactly. seen that a lot actually because or even like when you just realize i'm like three weeks pregnant yes. four weeks pregnant That's when at that particular point ladies it was that particular cover you're getting is for the next yes. baby. Because <laughs> you know, the insurance are very smart. You don't play with insurance companies. They've put a waiting period of 10 to 12 months. There's no way you can go past 12 months if you're pregnant exactly. now. Exactly, if you're already pregnant. So they know you have given. <laughs> yeah. Them. Okay, so waiting periods, yeah. sublimits. What yeah. else? So there's also uh, important to now look into the exclusions. Okay. What is not covered? Yes, because most of the time we look at the sublimits and the benefits, what is covered, but we forget to look at what is not covered. Mm -hmm. So things like contraception generally is not covered. Anything fertility? Yeah, it's not covered. <laughs> we'll have that long conversation yeah, another yes, day because, so yeah, yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. there's that. Then there's now, let's say, um, in, in the case of, um, you know, drinking and driving. And then yeah. you get into an accident. Okay. So in the case of an accident, you know the first thing they check is whether you are your alcohol level. Yes, your alcohol yeah. level. Yeah, because it's it shows that you actually made this decision mm -hmm. and you decided to drink mm -hmm. anyway, and it's accelerated. Because with insurance, you have to show them that you did your very best, best to prevent to prevent. Yeah, it. yeah. Because insurance is not just a charity, guys. Please always remember, put they're it in, in your business. mind. They're in business. It's in business. I'm in business. <laughs> <laughs> Don't shout. They yeah. don't hear that. <laughs> so it's yeah. very, very important now to look at the exclusions. Mm. And then some exclude some other illnesses like... Even pre-existing. Yeah. I know there's some people who yeah. will probably refuse to cover you if it's a pre-existing so, one. Nowadays with mm. pre-existing, what they do is they cover it to a certain limit. Level. Yeah. Okay. But what is most important is for you to declare that you have that pre-existing condition. Okay. And they'll, okay. they'll cover it to a certain limit. Also that one is 
now as it's you have to still go through the waiting period because mm-hmm. you can't just like now okay I have a this illness and then I'm just getting in so yeah. like sure I and take care of it yeah. so there's usually also a waiting period for, okay. for now for pre- the pre-existing yeah. condition so it's not that okay. the insurers are unfair mm-hmm. it's, it's just the rules and regulations yeah. around how insurance works okay. insurance covers things that were not existing mm-hmm. like maybe it didn't happen yeah and they were not planned they were not for. They're like, for, yeah. Gafla bin vu. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. now they had to put into consideration because now these people have pre existing conditions. conditions. So you'll and, notice yeah. that the pre existing limits are very huge. Yeah. So it's, that's why it's also important to now look across to see which one has higher pre existing limits. Limits. Yeah. Okay. So okay. another thing to look at mm-hmm. is now the hospitals covered. Mm-hmm. Do you have specific hospitals that you frequent? Oh, yeah, because I remember when I was employed, mm. sorry for interrupting yes. you, Mama. Yes. When I was employed, there's a day I actually went to my medical <laughs> cover very confidently <laughs> to, uh, let me not name the hospital. Yes. And like that lady is looking at me like, no, but you're not covered. I'm telling them, I have insurance. What do you mean I'm not covered? <laughs> Bombay, I wasn't yes. covered in that, that hospital. Yes. That so hospital. always ask for yeah. the list of hospitals that you're covered in. And if you want to go to a specific hospital, choose an insurance that actually caters for that. Yeah, because as you can cover you in that hospital. So that now it will make your life so much easier. And you're not also embarrassing yourself yes. at the reception. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. And then another thing that is also equally as important is jurisdiction. Ooh, what? Yes. Yeah. So jurisdiction is w- 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 which areas does this cover? Does this insurance cover? So if your insurance, you, the jurisdiction is Kenya, you'll only be covered in Kenya. Mm-hmm. If you go outside the country, it will not be covered. So if you're someone who travels a lot, and you are maybe work in Europe, you all over Africa. Um, it might be important for you to think about an international car. Uh, so that now you mind giving us examples. The like of in in sh- like international covers. There's Cigna, there's Signa, Buka, Buka. there's Aetna, uh-huh. there's Allianz, there's different okay. different. Uh, we'll we we'll list them yeah. down below. Now international uh, babes. Yes. Eh? <laughs> okay, and guys. <laughs> So it's always yeah. important mm-hmm. because now if you're not, you know you're going to spend a long time maybe in a specific country because yeah. now that's how, where you work, mm-hmm. it will be important for you to consider an international cover yeah. because a Kenyan cover is not going to help you okay. in, in, in Europe. Yeah. Not so if I travel Italy, yeah. to Uganda, forget even Europe, yeah. Nemenda, I do uh, clothes. Nemenda ni kuendea to uo material. Yeah. And then I come back to Kenya. Mm-hmm. But I have a normal Kenyan uh, medical yeah. cover. While I'm there for my one one week stay, I'm mm-hmm. all severely sick mm-hmm. and I have to be taken to hospital. Mm-hmm. But I have a Kenyan cover. Mm-hmm. That is not like based in Uganda. Mm-hmm. Does that mean it's me and my money and yeah, my so, emergency fund? So then maybe you should have had now a travel cover which has medical. That, okay. You okay. understand? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Kind of, yeah. Because if it was like a very, very urgent thing that mm-hmm. now you have to be there. Yeah. So this is the thing. Many, quite a number of Kenyan insurers mm-hmm. also cater for East Africa. Uh-huh. Yeah. So you just have to ask, okay, mm-hmm. um, which cover, especially if you know that you, you train in Uganda or Tanzania. Yeah. Like, okay, which cover mm-hmm. can help me in the case I yeah. to fall sick in yeah. Uganda or, but just generally, if you're, you're not going to go somewhere for a very long time, Get you can have travel, travel yeah. insurance. Yeah. To take care of now medical, any medical emergency yeah. during your stay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, and then the other thing to consider, obviously, is the cost of cover. Mm-hmm. So just get something that is good and within a good budget because some can tend to be overpriced. Yeah. So it's good to know that, okay, this is now what it is that I want and is this cost fair? That's why it's also always important to compare across the market. Right. Yeah, don't just buy the first insurance you get. That with, you get. Yeah, because, you know, sometimes people fall for marketing and then they're like, oh, this is not trying to expect it. Yeah. Always go down and check what are the limits, sublimit, exclusions. Yeah, so that now when even as you're making a decision, it's mm. an informed decision. Yeah, and we are going to be actually getting into costing. Mm. So stick around yeah. until we get to that point. Now, now that you've given us the general considerations, if I'm a single yes. person, are there some things that I need to be like on the lookout for or like is medical insurance different for single, married, mm. big families yes. in terms of like choosing one? So if you're a single person, mm. you can now just get, a, now it depends, okay, are you 
someone who frequents the hospital a lot. Mm. So let's just say number one, just get an inpatient, a good inpatient. That's the first thing. Mm. Because I guess most people maybe were single and starting out, mm. maybe they don't even fall sick that often. And, yeah. So you can at least start with an inpatient if you have a budget. Mm. Yeah, so that you're on a bad mm. on a budget. Yeah. Because now you want to know in the case of admission, because we had mentioned that Admissions are the ones that can take a lot of your money. Yeah. You know, for consultations, got 2,000 here, 3,000 there. That's when you can even like ask a friend. Um, but for admission, 100,000, it's very rare to get. Then that is a WhatsApp group's conversation. Yeah. Right? So, as a single um, a person, it's good to have a good inpatient. And then, if you have the funds for it, why not outpatient? Yeah. Yeah. And least, like, I always tell people, okay, check. How often do you go to hospital? Last year, how much did you spend? or in your medical care outpatient, yeah? Then you can get an outpatient within that limit. I want to pause yeah. you yes. there. Yes. In case there's someone watching us who does not know the difference between outpatient mm -hmm. and inpatient, real yes. quick, okay. help us understand. Patient takes care of admissions, like you have to sleep in a hospital bed. Okay. Outpatient, you go to the hospital and come back home. All right. As simple as that. Yeah. Even now, day surgery is under admission, as an inpatient, because you okay. actually use a hospital bed. bed. Yes. Okay. As long as you use a hospital hospital bed it that in pain you that's in patient and now what she's saying is that if you're a single person mm. maybe you're just starting out your life or you know and you're on a budget mm. the most important one to get is mm. inpatient mm. because this one for kwenda kungolewa meno and I don't know, you know, getting an ultrasound, you can get 5,000 or even copper. Yeah. But like the moment you have to be admitted, that's where trouble starts. So exactly. we are saying if you're on a budget and, and you already have NHIF, remember we said if you're on this channel, yeah. Let, we said that's the bare minimum. Now, the second layer, if yeah. I'm getting you right, mm -hmm. is if someone is on a budget, mm -hmm. get inpatient. Yeah, get a good inpatient. Because that's the one that has the possibility of skyrocketing mm -hmm. overnight. Exactly. Yeah. Then if you are out single woman have maternity if you're sexually active. active. Yeah, just a taboo a Tell them. You see when you I am pregnant. Yeah. Just yeah. just to make sure that you have mm -hmm. a, an inpatient with also a maternity. Yeah. And if you can afford it now you can get outpatient mm -hmm. and then there's also dental to take care of your teeth. And optical, optical especially if someone who wears glasses. Like me. Yes. Yeah. It's so important. Mm. And then other things to consider is, like, does this cover take care of my annual checkup? Oh, the wellness. Yeah. That, that, super, super that is very, very important. So if you have only inpatient, mm. just put aside some money to always do your annual checkup. So it's really around 8,000 yeah. to 10,000. to like 50. Yeah, 8 to 50. 50. Exactly. Yeah, per so, year. Yeah, it's like mm. maintenance. Just always go and get a checkup because most of the reason why people get like extremely sick is because something was not caught early. Early enough. So just put this as like, something to do every single year yeah and and i think there's something that's really surprised me when you sent me my first quotation yes. i noticed that inpatient is actually way cheaper mm -hmm. than outpatient so if you guys are thinking that oh you know in, like because i'm being admitted the cover is going to be expensive mm -hmm. inpatient is actually mm -hmm. quite uh, cheaper mm -hmm. than outpatient yeah. obviously because the yeah. possibility it's of you being admitted low. is lower it's much much yeah lower. okay okay married mm -hmm. people with married. families yes. i'm talking babies baby. two babies what? three babies Yo. how do i yes. number one yes. nataka kwanza kujo, if i already have two kids mm. what is the, the the procedure what are some of the things i should look at especially in terms of like because there's a time mm. i've talked to someone who has a cover mm -hmm that states 200,000 for outpatient mm -hmm. per year. Mm -hmm. I think they had understood it's 200 per person in the family, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you see, if I have four kids, what does that, what does a 200, okay, if we are four in the family, mommy, daddy, two, two babies, yes. what does a cover for 200K outpatient imply? Mm -hmm. One. Number two, in between my cover, maybe I renew my cover in October, mm -hmm. uh, but I give birth mm -hmm. to baby number three mm -hmm. before October. Yeah. How do I go about like now making sure if baby number three has problems, they can be taken care of? Okay. Yeah. So even now when you have a family mm. and you know young children, young children get like too much. They are always in hospital for something. <laughs> so first of all, I'll ask if this person is employed or not employed. Mm -hmm. So mo many people, many companies already offer medical insurance. So let's say, for example, now you're self-employed or in business. So it will be important definitely to have a very good inpatient. Mm -hmm. And you have to ask us, uh, find out, is it 
now all of it shared with these individuals. So it's an important question to ask. Mm. So in patient, let's say for example, it's covered, you should take, I mean, it's um, shared, can take now like a bit, a bigger one, especially if your f family is much bigger. Yeah. So the, when the family is that small, maybe you might not have to have a very big cover, uh -huh. but when it's big, then you have, and you're all sharing. Yeah. I know the chances of one of you falling sick at the same time is low, it's very but low, still, yeah. it's important to just have sufficient cover. Uh -huh. And when you have kids, it's important to have outpatient. So you can add, so this is the interesting thing about with kids, yeah? So everything, you can just structure it the way based on now maybe your budget and how it is that you want. Sometimes what parents do, they can be one parent who take care of one kid. Oh, another parent, can be another. Help the yeah, other. No, it's just like now trying with many different um, oh, no. um, iterations to see which one makes sense. Oh. Or it can be like, okay, all of us are going to come in as a family. Or yeah. even the children can get nowadays medical insurance by themselves. Standalone, Standalone for the baby. Kids. Oh, yes. okay. okay. So okay. it's up to now like you and your broker or your agent to see what to makes structure. most to structure it accordingly. Mm -hmm. So we are going to look at what are the current covers you already have. Mm -hmm. And then now we'll see how is it that now we can structure it the right way. If we're going to split the family, yes. everybody has their own. Okay. Or just making sure that kids have their own and you parents. Yes. You can be like, okay, parents who don't feel fall sick that much. Let's just get an inpatient. An inpatient. And then but for, for my the kids, kids let's, let's get them an in and an outpatient. Oh, yeah. So it depends on just how you family. Like, when Jika, I'm go at your As in, I'm yeah. just like, how did you break that yeah. one now? And the flu, then they get the flu. So like, you have, oh, actually. Now, guys, yeah. I, I'm happy I asked that question because what I'm hearing is that if you're if you're just single, Nukosawa, you know, you're no longer falling around in school. Yeah. If you're on a budget, you can start with inpatient. Yes. But then, if you're a family person, mm. you might want to actually consider getting uh, an outpatient for the sole purpose of yes. the frequency of babies getting into mm. like Hosi yeah. in and out. Um, is, is higher at that particular yeah. point. Yes. Wow, thank you for that. Another thing I think I would want us to, I would want you to enlighten us about is we have Wazazi, we have parents who are probably retired. Mm -hmm. Of course, with age comes lifestyle diseases and like I'm thinking how to take a cover and how to protect my parents, right? How do you go about that, especially because like the older you grow, um, I, I don't know, is there an age limit to how far you can go in terms of taking a cover and if like there's someone who's watching us who's like okay me my job already covers me but most of my bills are because my mom is sick or my dad is sick and i i would love to know like if i can take out a cover for them so how do we go about like this you know especially like taking a cover for our elderly parents so there is definitely senior covers and it depends on how old your parents are. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to senior covers, you can have senior individual covers, then I'll give you another strategy on what I've seen also parents doing. Okay. Because if there's one thing that can actually also break our bank mm -hmm. is parents made for. And yeah. on a jua, it's yeah. parent. And it's a you yeah. can't yeah. ignore that. Yeah. Like, you know, these other Actually, things yeah. you can ignore a WhatsApp group. But if it's your mom, exactly, you're moving heaven and yeah. earth for them. Yeah, they've yeah. done so much for you. So yeah. it's like now you feel. Mm. And either way, when they're sick, they have to to be someone is someone has to take so care of them. So obviously, if they are employed, mm. their employer will be able to take care of it. Yeah. But if you're seeing now your parent is approaching retirement, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's best now before they retire, they already get into a plan. Because most people get um, medical covers after, after retirement. Yes. Uh -huh. So it's good as they're seeing that they're getting closer to retirement for them to take just before. And you see now, in, in, what is interesting about many um, clients that we've worked with, especially the ones who are taking for their parents, uh -huh. par to tell a parent to pay for their own insurance. Do hey, you know? Those, those who say Jesus is when she <laughs> I love for what you're saying. The PR rates, they are so yes, scary. It's rich, uh -huh. If you look at a quotation for a 29-year-old and a 60-year-old, it's almost mm. like we're not in the same country. Exactly. You mm. know. So why before yes. retirement? Because so that now by the time they retire, at least the insurer has record of them so that they're already inside. Uh -huh. And then also by the time they're getting out, the waiting periods are over. Okay. You see, now they can still, even when they can just get at least something, even and just an inpatient when now they're both. When they're may retire. To retire. Uh -huh. So that by the time they're coming out, they already have a fully fledged medical cover. Yeah. Which has already kicked in. Because most senior covers have quite long waiting periods. Oh, really? How long? There's some which even have like 24 months. For oh, yeah, before patients. you use it. Before you use it. Yeah. Yes. So it will be important now to get some, especially if you're getting some as an individual, to get it before and if you can 
if your parents do not want to, it will be important to budget that in because you know but either way it will still fall on you if there's a medical. Yeah, so what if my mom is or my dad? Yeah. They are, uh, they've been self-employed. Yes. Mama uh, yani mama mboga, you know, and I'm trying to really just protect yes. her. Would that mean that I mean at that particular point I just have to wait for the waiting period to last. Yeah, so I just get them. It doesn't mean that now they, like, let's say things like malaria can still be taken care of. Yeah, things which can still be taken care of. Yeah. It's just that the ones which require waiting period may take a bit Like longer. the pre-existing, like pre-existing condition. condition. Yeah. But now they are improving this medical cover for mm-hmm. seniors. Mm-hmm. So it's equally, as I said, it's still important to have something. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then another way is maybe if they've retired as a group, they can even get what they call now, like, you see the ones which people get as an SME cover. Yeah, like a they group can, Yeah, cover. they can get a group cover. They'll get better rates and some of them don't even have waiting periods. So, wow. like, let's say, for example, three of us have retained and one of us has a company. You okay. can just put everybody in mm-hmm. and then you get a medical cover. So does that mean if I have, like, uh, if my parents have, like, this Chama group, mm-hmm. they've been together for so long, they're yeah. almost age men, they've done building projects together, yes. Yes. can they come together even if they are not blood-related yes. and, yes. like, take a cover? Yeah. And you're saying that if you do take a group cover, mm-hmm. yeah. that would mean that you're getting better rates. Yes. Because of yeah, economies because of, of, scales, of scales. Yeah, you're coming as a mm-hmm. number of people. Okay. And then as soon as there's some sort of proof that this is a group uh-huh. and there's some sort of like it's been registered okay it's easier to get another question yes. this is exciting for me as yes. a business yes. owner yes if i have an sme mm-hmm. so i have the legacy hub kenya or yes. the way you have larry's yes um and you have your team mm-hmm. what are the conditions for us to like get a, a cover if we wanted to like mm-hmm. if at the legacy of me and my four people mm. we wanted to take a cover like now for the five yes. of us yes would i need okay of course i'm a registered company yes. the legacy hub is an llc mm-hmm. would they need to have like employment contracts of some mm-hmm. sort mm-hmm. or like because some people don't work full-time for me yeah. Right? So what are the conditions? And please listen up. Mm. If you're in business and you have a team and you guys are trying, like, of course, all of you are self-employed. So there's no employer saving you with a cover. So please talk to us about, like, how can we do that as small business owners? Or maybe, like, how us guys have this group of CEO babes. Can we come together? So and I want to know, like, especially in the case of an SME, Mm. what do I do with my five people? So, you remember you are the employer, like the legacy hub is the employer. So yeah. Obviously, we need now the CR12 for yeah, yeah, yeah. For that, okay, I'm the employer, I am the owner. Yeah. yeah. And then all this yeah. now you need to fill in the application form. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you just need to fill in the application form. Then there'll be other smaller documents to show now because you need to actually fill in the individuals. Yeah, the people who work yes. under me. The okay. people who work under you because now mm-hmm. it's the name, the in the of birth and all that because mm-hmm. they'll also need to have their card. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So all you just need is it's actually pretty simple. You just need your CR twelve mm-hmm. and then they'll ask maybe for the care pin, the company care company. Yeah, for you. And then now you have to fill in the application form and then And the names of everyone who works under yes, me. Yes. Exactly. As long as there's that they are covered. Yes. Do they each get a card like for yeah. going to hospital and stuff? Get, yes. Hey you SME people. Who now is, uh, let her, yeah, let us yeah. know in the comment section if this <coughs> makes sense. Now I want us to yes. move real quick, yeah? Um, we've talked about this uh, small business covers, family covers. And guys, I hope we've answered your questions in that regard because I received that, this question the last time we had this conversation. It's very yeah. possible to come together as a yeah. group, yeah. as family members, whether you're re- um, yeah. you're related. Like was Kitambo, yes. Yes. we used to think it just has to be mother, father, children. But now you can come uncles, aunties yeah. and get like a group cover so, together. Yeah, now that's one if you're coming in as a, yeah. as a group. Not, it's a, you see now, like, not, not under you. Not under you. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Now. Um, there's something you talked about uh, the last time we were talking about life insurance. Mm-hmm. And guys, if you have not watched that video on life insurance, I'm going to link it down below, right? And you mentioned like things like critical illnesses, mm-hmm. like cancers. You also mentioned like di- um, disability. Mm-hmm. Um, can I get like a medical cover that caters to these things as well? Okay, so there's some, usually with medical insurance, mm-hmm. it'll there's some which can cater for some critical illnesses, maybe but till a certain limit, because many of them cater for something like cancer, uh-huh. but there's a sublimit to it. Yeah. So it can only cover you to maybe 300,000, 500,000, depending 000. on what how it is. Yeah. So remember, we say the first layer is NHIA. Uh-huh. Then the second layer is a private medical insurance. Yeah. yeah. Then the third layer, because sometimes, as we said, things like cancer can really break the bank. Yeah. So it's important to have 
a critical illness cover. Mm -hmm. So this critical illness cover pays out a lump sum in the case of a diagnosis of a cancer, yep. stroke, kidney failure, mm -hmm. coma. You see the things which can actually break the bank. Yeah. The ones which can put you in hospital for a very, very long, long time. Mm -hmm. So what that will do is when you get Remember, especially if you already have a Kenyan cover, okay. jurisdiction must, pro must probably is Kenya. So mm -hmm. if you have maybe an illness, a cancer that you require to go to India, well, yeah, there's some, yeah, so maybe you might not be able to. So at least mm -hmm. when that payout is done by the critical illness cover, mm -hmm. because it's actual cash, it's a lump sum that's paid oh, out. Oh, so it's not like it's it doesn't pay the hospital. No, 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 no. This is money that's coming to me. Yes. Yeah, remember okay. medical insurance, the bills are paid to the hospital specialists, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, but critical illness cover is paid out to you. Oh, you know, yes. that's so important because sometimes mm. even Gonjo mm, exactly. you need to buy diapers, yes. you need to pay a home nurse, yes, exactly. you need to get like special foods for them. Okay. They're now maybe not able to work. Yeah. yeah. So, so yes, it does okay. cater, critical illness does cater, yes, as mm. an income protection. Mm. But at the same time, it can be used to for treatment because that is money. Someone can go out of the country or they can you know, think yeah. about alternative ways of, treat of treatments, mm -hmm. yeah, so that now they can focus on getting better. So it's actually an important extra layer, yeah. especially now because um, things like cancer are only limited for, with your medical camp. Right. Yeah. And that's so important because sometimes when you have a, a sick person, and especially if it's in long term, they're not ever in hospital. And sometimes money is not just needed for treatment. Mm -hmm. It's money that's needed. Like imagine if that person was the sole breadwinner exactly. of their family. So now their income has to be replaced in some way. Yeah? Exactly. You whispered something to me earlier yes. today. Yes. Hospi cash. Yes. What is that? So hospi cash is also a form of income replacement. Uh -huh. So what hospi cash does is when you're admitted, for every day you admit, and depending on what plan you've picked, mm -hmm. you're going to be given a certain amount of money every day to more or less almost like replace your income because you could not go to work then. Do you know I almost don't <laughs> believe you? I don't have never. <laughs> but like going I, was, was I was I was today years old. Yeah. When you, I'm like, so if I'm admitted and I had that cover, mm -hmm. if I tell them because I'm admitted, I, I normally I make 10,000 every month mm -hmm. or 5,000 every month. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that, I mean, sorry, uh, 5,000 every day. Mm -hmm. Does that mean for the days I am admitted yes. and I cannot make that 5,000 every mm -hmm. day. They gi they'll give yes. me the 5,000. Yes. Who are this? Uh, as long as... How many kids are there? One kwa papa Kenya. And even the two who are dream. What can kind of make a tap for skis if you try to ensure us? Guys, let me... Guys, yeah. follow this, babe. Mm. Le Risk Africa. I'm going to link the yeah. IG down below and put her page yeah. here. Because, like, these are some of the things, like, Ata Mimi Unani said, yeah. yeah. Because, like, I was today years yeah. old when I knew that there's such a thing. And do you know why that fascinates me? Because mm. I'm a business person. Yeah. I coach. If Coach Susan is not there today because she's unwell, we are not mm. eating. There's no one. We are not eating. You understand? So, yeah. like, for me to hear that there's a plan that I can work around my health in such a way that mm. if the business owner, who the business is dependent on, is not able to make her daily income then she can be yeah. like sorted yeah especially for people who for sure every single day they yeah. earn amount and they know that in the case yeah. i was not able to work yes and this can replace and can take care of miscellaneous right exactly yeah guys you've heard about hospice cash reach out to marianne mm -hmm. for more details yes. okay i love that yeah now let's wrap this up i want us to talk money yes Okay? Yes. Money is very, very important. Mm -hmm. Atutake kwambiwa hospital cash, mm -hmm. medical cover ETC without mm -hmm. getting tentative numbers. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, I don't want to put you on the spot because yes. I know that the numbers are really dependent on, on my age. age. Yeah. yeah. So if you're younger, it's cheaper. Uh, it's cheaper. The older you get, and that's why I keep telling you guys, mutafte pesa. Especially as you're getting older because yeah. the, the older you become, of course, you're more exposed to like things like lifestyle diseases. Yes. But like, if you can help us <laughs> with some numbers, exactly. okay? Yeah. Um, we already know NHIF before um this new government um uh, policies have yeah. been implemented. We used to pay five hundred. Um, but I know now the number is maybe roughly around seven something. Mm. You guys confirm on the website. But like now, there's also something you mentioned. Yeah. Um, I want us to talk about these private covers, and because yeah. Mimi Lesmante, my subscribers, yeah. we are budget people here. Yes. You mentioned to me something about a budget 
policy. Because sometimes you get a, a quotation and you're getting like 40 Gs, mm. 50 Gs, and you're like, I don't have 50,000. Yes. Um, talk to us about this uh, costs. Yeah. Especially, I want you to start with the budget covers. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we know the premium covers are like, I mean, even if you want one for 300,000, you can get it, trust me. But like, um, because my subscribers are budget people, mm-hmm. most of us, talk to us about this budget covers. Yeah. And if you can, give us an estimate of like how much, like would the uh, 20, 30, early, tw- late 20s, maybe uh, early 30s yeah. person yeah. Uh, get in terms of like how much would you pay for an annual premium for a budget mm-hmm. cover mm-hmm. and like how much are you expecting in mm-hmm. terms of like a payout. So talk to us about costs and okay. the budget. So yes, there is budget covers in the market mm-hmm. and I remember mentioning to you there's as low as 6,500 but also remember and it's yeah. claim independent on age, age. and yeah. all other factors. Mm-hmm. So for something like 6,500 mm-hmm. it caters for inpatient up to 250,000. Yeah. So unless you know that in the case of anything this there's going to be a payout of 250,000. Yeah. And the other thing about budget covers mm-hmm. is that most of them don't cover top tier hospitals. So that's another one. Oh, it's it, budget. It is Boys, budget. you can't be on a budget and expect in premium. <laughs> premium. So you pick, you pick. Yeah, so if you're looking into an aga can, don't think you're going to get. Uh, and that's only pay 300. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but at 30, I'm not yeah. wanting, depending on your age. But yes, there is budget covers mm-hmm. where you can at least start small. Yeah. Because I always say, you'd rather start with something mm-hmm. and then you'll build up. Yeah. yeah. So you start to see now it's even just a bit more than an NHIF to be honest. That's true. Do you know actually yeah. it's, it's almost the same because the same. like for me I used to pay and I still pay my NHIF once a year yes. which is 500 times 12 months which is, which is 6,000 6, exactly. that I pay. Yes. Yeah. So there's even covers for 20,000, 15,000 as okay. I said dependent on age. Your ear. Yes because remember also with the insurance mm-hmm. when you're younger the chances of you getting sick is lower. Right. So obviously it's it favors the young mm-hmm. ones. Yeah, but you can work on whichever level. level yeah. yeah, so that's just a rough idea mm-hmm. of where it can start. But there's like for on level, like from 30,000, 15,000, mm-hmm. but the budget covers maybe between 6k to like 20 something. Yeah, 6 to 20 something. Yeah, guys. Um, and, 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 and I think this is so important. Mm-hmm. If, you, if you're already watching us and you're like, you know, I've had you guys and yeah, I already know this is good for me. Mm-hmm. Like, what are the numbers? As you yeah. had, you can get as little as 6,000 mm-hmm. all the way to, I mean, 300,000. You can get 20,000, 40,000, 60,000, mm-hmm. okay? Yeah. Bottom line here is that, and I, and I wish I would like imprint this in mm-hmm. our minds, is that the day you stop telling yourself or stop pushing the narrative that, this thing is just for rich people. It's not affordable or accessible to me. You'll never explore the options. Because as you can see, the more we start exploring yes. these options and talking about it, you realize that medical insurance and a good one mm. is accessible to literally yes. a- anyone. Yes. Obviously, unacheza na your level of mm. income. Okay. Mm. Now, obviously, there are different ways of financing. Yes. Now, me, I keep preaching about things as fun, <laughs> sinking funds, mm-hmm. but I know there are also others. So, yes. maybe the first thing that I'll remind you guys, we talk about sinking funds so much yes. in terms of like um, being able to like um, top these things up. I want to give you a good example. If you get like a cover for like 36000 for instance, like and you know that uh, let's say you pay for it in October, the next time you need to renew that cover is next year, October, which means you have 12 months to plan for. Exactly. So if I divide 36,000 by 12 Mm -hmm. months, that is around 3,000 every month. Mm -hmm. So if you open a sinking fund, Mm -hmm. maybe for yourself or for you and your family, Mm -hmm. and you decide that you're going to be contributing 3,000 every month, but the next, by the time the bill is due, you're already tier, has enough. Yeah. You're ready for the premium. Mm. So sinking funds are an amazing way to plan for this expenditure. Yes. Now that is on the budget beam side. Now yeah. for this protection yeah. expert, yeah. I do know that you guys have something called insurance premium financing. Yes. Talk to us about that. What is it? So with that one, you are able to pay in installments. So let me just explain how it is that mm-hmm. it works. Mm-hmm. You see now, let's say as Susan saying the insurers the premium is coming maybe to fifty thousand or forty thousand. So what happens is the bank gives you gives the insurer that forty thousand and then you pay the bank in installments. Mm-hmm. So because you know like insurance in this country you have to pay it once. But if you don't have the money to pay it once you can be like, okay, yeah. I can get a loan for it through the bank mm-hmm. and then they pay that and then you between you and the bank 
you have to pay in installments. So usually around four installments. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, they have to include their interest. Yeah. But it's very easy to get in uh, the IPF. Just, yeah, you just, in the case you need any guidance, we can be here to help you. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that just remember that you pay this amount of money in installments. So let's say, for example, you need the insurance now and you don't have the time to do the sinking fund. Mm -hmm. So most probably divide by four and like it will be easier for me to pay the 10,000. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Yeah. Yes. But then now my question is, Miriam, if I have not finished my installment, mm -hmm. can I get treatment? Yes. Because remember, the bank has already paid the insurer the full amount. You are the one who's paying the bank. Oh, remember, okay. there's the bank. Yeah, yeah. yeah the loan. Yeah, the bank is gi is giving you a loan, and that amount of money is being is, is used to pay the insurer okay. the full amount. So now you are the one who's paying the bank. So it means you already oh, have the one card. Oh, already. Okay. Own card. Do I end up paying slightly higher? Yes, because, because, of, because of the interest. interest. Yeah. Okay. So it's a give and take. It's a give and take. Yes. I love that. Yes. I love that. Now, um, I want us to wrap this up, yes. and I know you are full of tips. Yes. Tips, tips and hacks, mm -hmm. right? Please give us a couple of tips and okay. hacks like for because I know people have had quite a number of issues with medical insurance and like, um, you know, uh, horror stories. Mm. Give us your expert tips yes. for anyone who's looking to get a cover or who already has one cover. Mm. Then we can wrap this up. OK, let me yeah. see if I can summarize it to like at least seven tips. OK, so number one. Utilize the provider panel because these are doctors and hospitals that have already been vetted and the prices have already have been negotiated with the insurers. Yeah. So for you to be able also to save and to reduce the runaround, yeah. just choose whoever it is that is on the list. Yeah. So always ask for the provider list and use the people who are on the list. So as I said, it gives better rates mm -hmm. and you are certain that the insurer will pay well, because they're already up. The hospital is in their panel. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, if you visit the hospital, follow this order. Mm -hmm. First of all, claim the employee group medical. Mm -hmm. Do not start with your own. If you already have your own personal medical, just start with your own. Your own. Your own. Your own. Your own. Your own. Yeah. If you have a wife or a spouse, a husband who also use has, theirs. use theirs, yeah. their med the medical form, now their, their employer. employer. After you're done with that, that's when now, like, if they're all finished, that's when now you come to your, to your so that time. you can preserve the limits in the case you need it later. Okay. You just don't use it just because it's there. It's there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because also, the chances of now the premiums going higher because you are overutilizing your cover. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's People, high. premiums usually go high, mm -hmm. yeah? And then number three, don't always opt for expensive and unnecessary procedures. But then we know sometimes there are the healthcare professionals who try to milk customers. They recommend that you yeah. get a pap smear yeah. when you had one three weeks exactly. ago. Like, yeah. I'm like, I need a pap smear once in yeah. five years. Sometimes it's like yeah. I have targets. So you have to be very careful. So if you feel like there's something a bit off, just maybe go ask for a second opinion because sometimes yeah. people have targets and they're like, okay, yeah. they, they'll ask you to do some procedures that you don't even right. need. But you know what, babe? Yeah. I think this is so important to also like emphasize on this point. People really need to educate themselves yeah. and to be woke. Because like, yes. even for me, yeah. I didn't know that if I've ever had a pap smear and I take it regularly yeah. and as a woman who's like below yes. her 50s, don't you need don't need a pap smear every so yeah. often. Like once a year, good enough. Yes. In fact, there's even a guy who told me yes. that if you're like below your 40, 40 that's once in three, three years, years two to enough. three years is enough. So you see, there is to quay walk. Yeah. As in some so of these things, yeah. when you know, yeah. it helps like when you know, like at our to an attacker to Nifanyi procedure exactly. for the money. Yeah. Yeah. And then another thing, which I also now number four, yeah. um, consider telemedicine for ailments that are not that serious. Okay. So I remember even during COVID with my child, you know, the Matuko thing, sometimes thinking of, okay, I have to get into a car. Go look for parking. Yeah. yeah. It's, it feels like so much. So if it's something which you don't believe is that serious, nowadays there's options of just having a conversation with a doctor. Online? Yeah, online. Is it cheaper? Yeah, it's cheaper. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it will help you save up, especially for minor ailments that you do not have to go <laughs> to the hospital physically. Yeah. But please, not, not for serious <laughs> illnesses. <laughs> for serious illnesses, go to the doctor. Yeah. But for some, which like, let's say a cough, a flu, and you mm -hmm. feel like it's not that bad. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then for prescriptions, because it's another place which can use a lot of money, shop yeah. around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that you don't utilize a lot of your cover if you don't have to. Yeah, me is if it's yeah. the exact same medication, one place you're getting it for five hundred, another place for three hundred. It makes sense for you to get, get the one because it's exactly the, the same. same one. Yeah, yeah. And then so you shop around for good rates, yeah. and then it's also equally as important if you were you went through uh, an admission. 
please guys check your like ask for an itemized bill because sometimes hospitals play oh yeah 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 sometimes they add a procedure that was not there uh, so always ask for an itemized bill okay. yeah and then another thing please last but not least guys eat healthy exercise and go for <laughs> annual checkups <laughs> Yeah. Take care of Please. yourself. Well, you don't want to use your medical cover if you don't have to. Let it be now like the last lifeline. But yeah. imagine just eat healthy. When you eat healthy and you exercise, you might not even have to go to hospital. That's true. You don't. Yeah. yeah you, your health. Your health is yes. your wealth. Exactly. It's really. There's it's no just... point of building all this money and you're sick. You won't even enjoy it. Yeah. So take care. Yeah. 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 Oh, wow. That is so, so yeah. amazing. Guys, I hope you've gotten some tips that are amazing for you to apply and to use. Application makes all the difference yeah. all the time. Yes. So Marian, man, I'm so, so happy. I've learned so much. My takeaway for today's host free cash. I'm like, uh, okay, so not that I'm planning still, to get but sick, still, but I'm coming for that know. cash in case yeah. I ever get sick. Yeah. You'll definitely plug um, me onto I'll that plan. You go. Um, now, one of my favorite things about your services yeah. is, yeah. is um, like even when I came to you for a medical cover, you really went the extra mile like to even give me like five different options in terms of like this is the the, the company mm -hmm. pros and cons yeah. the amounts and everything mm -hmm. so i'd want to also plug my subscribers please let us know if 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 this conversation really sparked something in them and like they would like to reach out to you mm -hmm. for like a medical cover please take us mm -hmm. through the procedure yeah. and tell us how to reach you yes. um yeah so what happens, you have to fill in a form yeah. and now we will be able to collect now very necessary information to be able to share with you the quotes. And then we share with you the quotes, you can go through it, then we can plan a session where if you have any further questions, we can help you. Yeah. Sometimes, Do you have charge for that? Service? No, no, that one is free for just taking up. Yeah. A, to take up cover by the way you charge. Like yeah. it doesn't get any to charge. Like in just to take up cover, mm -hmm. we don't charge for that. Mm -hmm. So at least what will happen is when you make that request, you're going based on what it is that you need. We're going to give you a number of you know different different recommendations, recommendations. Mm -hmm. and then now you will pick what makes sense for you, what is best for you, maybe based on where you are in doctor, is like which insurance he takes or what is now budget friendly for you so and then after that sometimes we don't even have to have a conversation everything is usually extremely clear yeah okay so as you've had you can reach out to yeah. le risk africa yeah. le um i'm gonna i'm actually gonna put the form yeah. down below yeah. as you've had filling in the form and giving those details is completely free mm. um so that you can also get like a quotation um and not just a quotation but like a, 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 a panel, quote. yeah, a comparison quote so that you can see insurance A versus insurance B versus insurance C. Mm. So I really loved that, yes. by the way, about your service. Yeah. Very good because someone is able to make yeah, an informed sure. decision yeah. as opposed to just being given one insurer yes. and like you choose that insurer because you don't know yeah. that there are other options. Yes. So I'm going to link it down below. I'm also going to link her Instagram page and other, uh, yeah, yeah. Exactly, and other ways you can reach her. So I really hope this was insightful. In case you have any questions, please reach out to us or yep. you can reach out to her. And I hope you have enjoyed today's video. And I will see you on the next Finance Friday video. So stay well. Remember to eat healthy and go to the gym. <laughs> eat healthy, go to the gym and check your body annually. Exactly. Do the annual illness checkup. Because <laughs> when you're over 30. This is done. Anyway, guys, <laughs> peace. See you next Friday. <laughs>